Hello everyone and welcome to this fourth video dedicated to the initial distillation of crude oil. We have already seen together the characteristics of crudes, the salting, the hot and cold prey train, and finally the liquid vapor traffic in the column. It is now time to see how to arbitrate the quantities of naphtha, kerosene, light and heavy diesel. Let's start with the naphtha. This naphtha cut after debutanization will produce high-octane gasoline in a reforming unit. Note that reforming unit catalyst does not appreciate high distillation endpoints. This may limit the amount of naphtha withdrawn from the atmospheric tower. In fact, if we increase the naphtha rate, it will become heavier and this can affect reforming unit performances. But how to adjust this amount of naphtha? Simply by regulating the overhead temperature of the tower, which will naturally act on the amount of reflux. The higher the overhead temperature, the more naphtha is withdrawn and the less reflux rate is re-injected to the tower and reversely. Reversely, what governs the minimum amount of naphtha that will be produced? If we lower this average temperature, we will produce a lighter kerosene cut, since we transfer the heaviest molecule of naphtha to the kerosene cut, which naturally become the lightest molecules of kerosene. This will have an impact on the flash point of the kerosene cut. As a reminder, the flash point is the minimum temperature at which a hydrocarbon cut ignites in the presence of a source of ignition. It is a property essentially related to safety. Indeed, a high flash point objective ensures that this cut will not ignite even in the presence of a source of ignition. The international specification for the kerosene flash point is 38 degrees C. In our case, the flash point of the kerosene is 24 degrees C. This kerosene is therefore too light. We could increase the naphtha flow, but it would have to be increased by a lot to be able to target the 38 degrees C required by international regulations. Then, what to do? To aim for such a high flash point, an additional equipment is installed. It is the so-called side stripper. In this stripper, steam is introduced at the bottom to strip the lightest hydrocarbons and to reroute them back into the main distillation tower. And here's what happens when we increase the flow of stripping steam. We can see that the flash point is significantly increased to 40 degrees C as soon as the kerosene is stripped at a flow rate of 20 kg of stripping steam per ton of kerosene. In our case, we will set a value of 3 tons per hour of stripping steam, which corresponds to 30 kg per ton, since we can see that we have a plateau effect beyond 30 kg per ton. Even if we strip up to 40 kg per ton, it will be possible to reach no more than 40 degrees C. To make sure that the kerosene flash point will be above the 38 degrees C specification, we need to take out the lightest molecules out of the kerosene. But how? By rerouting these lightest molecules in the naphtha cut. But how to do that? Simply by increasing the naphtha rate. If we increase the naphtha rate from 112 to 128 tons per hour, or plus 16 tons per hour, or plus 15%, the kerosene flash point will rise as described in this diagram. Since 16 tons per hour of additional naphtha is withdrawn, one stream leaving the tower has to be lowered by 16 tons per hour to respect the overall mass balance. In our case, we decide to leave the kerosene light diesel and heavy diesel rates unchanged. This means that the atmospheric residue rate will be reduced by 16 tons per hour. It will then become 185 tons per hour. We can see on this graph what happens when we decide to extract more naphtha from the tower. From 112 to 128 tons per hour, this means an increase in the naphtha rate from 22 to 26 percent of crude oil. Therefore, logically, the naphtha kerosene cut point is increased from 150 to about 170 degrees C. And since we decided to withdraw some kero, light diesel and heavy diesel rates, we observe that our cuts shift to the right, 
or, in other words, this cut gets heavier. As a consequence, the rate of residue must decrease to satisfy the overall mass balance. So, lightest molecules from the kerosene move to the naphtha, but since the kerosene flow rate is unchanged, we have a heavier kerosene, and as a consequence, kerosene withdrawal temperature rises from 187 degrees C to 205 degrees C. And this is also true for the light diesel. Its withdrawal temperature rises from 298 to 311 degrees C, and that of heavy diesel to 331 to 341 degrees C. Finally, the residue temperature will increase from 370 to 373 degrees C. As a consequence, overhead temperature will need to be increased from 141 to 152 degrees C. I have now a question for you. In your opinion, will the reflux rate increase or decrease? I let you think 5 seconds. Well, the reflux will decrease. Since the naphtha flow increases, the amount of gas arriving at the top of the tower being always the same, there will be less molecules available for the reflux. The reflux rate will decrease from 364 tons per hour to 337 tons per hour. Now that we have arbitrated the amount of naphtha versus that of kerosene, it is now time to focus on the arbitrage between kerosene and light diesel. This time, we need to look at the freezing point of kerosene. International regulations impose to have a point of disappearance of crystals, sometimes called freezing point, below minus 47 degrees C. That is, up to a temperature of minus 47 degrees C, it is not desired that crystals appear in the kerosene. These crystals are related to the heavy hydrocarbon content in the kerosene cut. The more there is, the higher the freezing point. In our case, we see that with 94 tons per hour of kerosene, we have a freezing point of minus 44 degrees C, which is not in line with the regulations. It is therefore necessary to extract less kerosene to decrease this freezing point. In our case, I propose you to reduce the amount of kerosene withdrawn from 94 tons per hour to 85 tons per hour, or minus 9 tons per hour. In this case, we see that the freezing point goes down to minus 46 degrees C, which is still not okay. We can observe that the flow of reflux is unchanged, of course, since we only arbitrate the amount of molecules between kerosene and light diesel. In parallel, the atmospheric residue rate has to increase by 9 tons per hour from 185 tons per hour to 194 tons per hour to satisfy the overall mass balance. Since the kerosene flow has been reduced, the kerosene becomes lighter. This has the effect of lowering the kerosene withdrawal temperature from 205 to 201 degrees C. Same effect for light diesel, whose temperature decreases from 311 to 304 degrees C, heavy diesel from 341 to 336 degrees C, and residue from 373 to 371 degrees C. I propose you now to lower again the amount of kerosene to satisfy the international regulations. At 72 tons per hour, we see that the freezing point drops to minus 49 degrees C, which is now in line with the regulations. Note that this also has the effect of lowering slightly the flash point, since in proportion we have more light molecules. What are the impacts on material balance and product withdrawal temperatures? When shifting from 85 to 72 tons per hour of kerosene, or minus 13 tons per hour, the atmospheric residue flow rate increases by 13 tons per hour from 194 tons per hour to 207 tons per hour. As far as temperatures are concerned, we have a lighter kerosene cut, just like all the products withdrawn below kerosene. Thus, the withdrawal temperature of the kerosene drops from 201 to 194 degrees C, light diesel from 304 to 293 degrees C, and heavy diesel from 336 to 327 degrees C. And finally, that of residue from 371 to 368 degrees C. 
Finally, it should be noted that the international regulations also require that the kerosene density be between 775 and 840 kg per cubic meter. And this property is respected in our case since we observe a value of 794 kg per cubic meter. We have now arbitrated the amount of naphtha versus that of kerosene. It now remains to tackle that of light diesel. I invite you to watch the fifth video dedicated to the initial distillation of crude oil. In the meantime, do not forget to test your knowledge. You can find the link to the quiz in the description of the video. Do not also hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Refining is exciting. See you very soon and thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.